For this episode, we have another outdoor epic sampler of sorts planned. This time we're going to find out why they call it Almost Heaven, West Virginia. I'm ashamed to say that I haven't put West Virginia on my to-do list sooner, but we had a week here to take on a loop of waterfalls, a world-famous Via Ferrata, climbing, hiking, breweries, and you can't go to West by God without getting in a raft. We'd kick things off in a little town called Elkins. A cold beer at Big Timber was the move. We'd make a few new friends and pick the brains of the locals, hearing all about their local outdoors over a few cold ones. They told us there would be live music at the square, so we caught the last two songs on our way to camp. The town is lined with public lands, and within an instant we were into the wilderness. Since we were still fairly new to the state, Jordan planned a lot of this trip on rec.gov. I've never really been a campground type of guy, but all the sites we've used so far with them are on public lands, meaning it's not your typical campground. At Horseshoe Bend, we had solitude, a stream, and we were surrounded by giant hemlocks at our campsite. Something that I've not really utilized before and has been a really, really wonderful peace of mind on this trip has been uh, our use of recreation.gov. Uh, we're traveling to a few areas I'm not familiar with, so to know that we have a site waiting, um, that someone else didn't take that one pull off on the side of the road, or you know, just to have that locked in spot, got our bathroom. Um, a lot of these sites too, they like smack them right in the middle of national forest. So you know you've got um, trailheads nearby. For instance, we've got a creek uh, and a river just right over there. Um, and you know, like it's a, it is a campground, but there's, there's three other people here. Uh, it's extremely quiet. We slept great. Um, and gosh, it's like big trees. After a calm, peaceful morning, we had to do our next stop the towns of Thomas and Davis. These two dots on the map really caught me by surprise. Unexpected trail towns, alive with art, culture, and filled with good food and people. Mm. I feel good. We grab a room at the Billy Motel and go check out the local beer scene at Stumptown's Ale and Mountain State Brewing. Locals' knowledge is always so key when traveling. If someone's had a beer or three, they're much more likely to let you know where's good to play. We got a good tip on camping and some good tunes, so we'd mark our maps for tomorrow and end our night at the Purple Fiddle. On day three, after a good night getting to know the town, we'd pack up and hit the woods. We had big plans for the weekend. We just got to camp and Steve's family is going to be here in a couple hours so we're going to start setting up but before we do that I'm going to put on my Picaridin bug repellent. Uh, this is a really crucial piece of gear for me because I'm one of those very unlucky people that mosquitoes love to eat alive um, and I like Picaridin because it's a better alternative to DEET so it's safer for your skin. It, you can use it if you're pregnant, um, if you have young children it's safe for them as well and if your gear touches it over time it's not going to deteriorate the way that uh, deep would do and not only does it come in a lotion but it also comes in a spray option so the spray picaridin lasts for up to 12 hours the lotion lasts for up to 14 hours and it's a really good way to protect yourself against not only the annoyance of having bug bites all over you but also the really harmful bacteria all right we just locked in an awesome campsite here in west virginia um, we're going to show some new people uh, my family actually what camping's all about. I think a lot of people get the wrong idea about what we do. You know, it doesn't always have to be this super severe, boom crushing five mile, you know, sleep in awful conditions trip. I'm a major advocate of any time spent outdoors, so we are going to introduce my sister and my nephew to their first camping experience. We were just enjoying a campground the other night, but now we're kind of switching gears and doing a different style of camping, and that is dispersed camping. Um, and a lot of people aren't aware of that, so I just want to kind of go over the basics. Um, if you are in an area that allows it, you know, make sure that the pull-off that you're at 
doesn't say no camping, doesn't say no fires, uh, and it, usually there's a sign at the beginning of most Forest Service roads that kind of spells out the rules. Um, but just a couple of things, you know, that we try and stick with when we're out here is, you know, we're going to use the fire pit over there. We're not going to make a new one. There's no point in that. Um, and we're putting our tent, you know, where people have already put theirs. Um, obviously, we had to find a place where there wasn't roots, but, you know, we're not going to go set up as pretty as that green moss is over there. We're not going to set up over there because we don't want to kill that or grow this area. This is probably going to be one of the last places that we're allowed to have a fire as well. Um, but even, you know, with that, allowance from the, the forest service we're going to respect it um, we've got some some extra water in the truck you know before bed we're gonna pour that sucker out um, if you're gonna have a fire and you don't have extra water if there's a creek nearby sometimes you can usually use that and lastly um, we can use dirt or just ash from the outsides of the fire to pot fire to cover it up um, and make sure that you know the wind doesn't send any embers while you're sleeping or catches a pretty place like this on fire uh, you know once we're setting up too we um, Obviously, we're, we're gonna look around and make sure this is safe. You know, I got one dead pine over there, but everything else around me uh, looks really healthy. And a lot of times, you know, we knew there was gonna be some cloud coverage and cooler temps. Uh, these pine forests will really, really break up uh, the wind. And if it rains, they kind of help with that too. And also, you know, if, if you had a good time, feel free to, you know, walk around, maybe pick up an extra can or, or something that somebody might've foolishly left behind. Um, I'm really, gonna enjoy showing my sister and nephew and her husband this place and you know the more pristine it is the more it's gonna feel special to them all right so we realized last episode when started the fire without y'all my bad um, I want to go over some fire starting tips and I also want to show off one of the features on this new signal that we are in love with it's a, a ferro rod kind of an emergency use but if you got time to kill why not practice your fire starting skills uh, so we're gonna show off what this thing's made of um, now, when I'm preparing, uh, I showed Jordan, you know, we had some, some wood that fell over here we processed, and I like to, you know, if I'm starting a fire with one of these, get some bark, some wood shavings, some really small stuff, stack it up in there, and then I'll scrape off a little bit of this fat wood, and fat wood is kind of like the base of a pine where all of the sap sits, and it kind of becomes like, almost like napalm, the stuff is awesome. And then once you got this going, I have just a bunch of tinder um, and logs over here ready and once that gets lit I'll stuff it at the bottom and let it kind of start all the little things and, and get bigger and bigger as it goes on. So not only is it a ferro rod but it's also an emergency whistle which is pretty awesome. So yeah, Ooh. pretty loud. As lovers of the outdoors nothing is more special to us than sharing how to enjoy them with others. I'm going to show you how to do it, alright? So we're going to light this. And it's got tree sap in it, so it's gonna go real, real quick. We're just gonna take that and we're gonna put it under. It, in the fireplace, is that like supposed to be the, the pilot light? Yeah, pretty pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's it's an outdoor Somewhat pilot light, it, for yeah. sure. I got to check off a really cool life moment and take my nephew on his first outdoor experience. My sister is also a doctor, and after the year our first responders and healthcare workers have had, I was hoping to also show her how much peace the outdoors can bring. We'd more than likely explore how wonderful it is to enjoy a good bourbon by the fire as well. I think it's important to start small with new folks, so we plan three shorter hikes and a cozy car camp for them. They meet us at camp and we catch up and go over some outdoor basic tips and tricks before hitting the trail. After a wonderful evening with family, the next morning we woke up and made a quick French toast, showed Robbie how to pack his pack, Big stuff that's not heavy at the bottom, or else the pack will pull down. You know, you want the heavy stuff red right here. So we're gonna use the sleeping bag, put that in there, and we're gonna start stacking stuff on top of it. And set out for our mini adventure at Blackwater Falls State Park. All right, so what's the plan? We're gonna, we packed up our camp. You say we go hit a waterfall? Yeah. Yeah? So what did we just find out from the ranger? What did we ask him? We, we asked him if it was safe. Safe and dog friendly? Yeah. And then how far? And it wasn't too far, so we can do it, right? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Follow me, everybody. The black water was massive, and we enjoyed learning all about how it got its name. Turns out, the water gets its amber color from the tannic acid of fallen hemlock and spruce needles. What do you think? It looks awesome! 
awesome! This 57 footer is an iconic landmark here in West Virginia and one of the most photographed waterfalls in the state. I promised Robbie I would teach him how to filter some water, but this one was a bit mighty to be heading down to. We make our way to our next stop, a smaller yet incredible set of falls named Elakala Falls. I forgot to mention today's goal. You know, you know how the last waterfall did not, we couldn't get to the water to drink from it? That means that's an X. We at least want to get to one waterfall that we can drink from. It was a feeder of the black water, and my goodness, was it beautiful. Big mossy rocks and a picturesque bridge over the falls had my new hiking partner wide-eyed. Once we got down there, we got down to water filtration business with Robbie. We're just gonna put water in the bag, so you just have to hold it. I'll do it for a second, then I'll let you do it, okay? You just have to hold it right there. See how the water's gonna go in? Yeah, I've got a little bit. And then this side with the white thing, you're just gonna screw that on there. After drinking some mountain water and cooling off, we decided to take on a summit hike to Lynn Point. From the top, we overlooked the beautiful canyon and saw the black water below. It was neat to show Robbie how we were way down there by the water, and now we were standing up here above it all. I think we may have sparked a love for nature with that little guy. He informed me he'll be spending his next summer with me, climbing mountains, drinking the good water, and wearing his new darn tough socks. I wish I could have kicked it with them for an entire week, but the road was calling and we are headed for a bit more of an intense adventure now. At Mystery Ranch, we build the best load-bearing backpacks in the world. We design for some of the most demanding users on the planet. We build for a different kind of customer, for folks who inspire us and for people with a job to do. We work directly with them to really understand their needs. We build with the best materials available and the most durable construction methods that exist so our users can achieve their mission, whether it's on the front line, the fire line, the cleanest line, or the steepest line. Mystery Ranch, built for the mission. Obos Footwear. We plant a tree for every pair sold. One million and counting. <laughs> That's a lot of f***ing trees. Whether you want to discover locals only backroads with a field map or you use a topography map to plan your next backpacking trip, maps.com has thousands of options to choose from. Unlike your phone, printed maps are waterproof and guaranteed not to run out of batteries or service. So next time you want to head out on an adventure, or even just a drive around town, leave your digital devices at home and grab your old trusty printed map and see what kind of fun you can get into. This is Arkansas, and we're giving you a chance to experience it like never before. One lucky winner and a friend will go on the trip of a lifetime, where you'll fly into remote locations, take in guided tours of the Arkansas outdoors, get VIP treatment, and experience views that you can only imagine. Register for your chance to win this backcountry aviation adventure at Arkansas.com. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Before we get back to our episode, I wanna share with you guys some exciting news we've got this season. Um, all of our brand partners have super awesome gear and they've decided to share that gear with you. So we're having weekly sweepstakes where you have the chance to win some of that gear. So make sure you sign up for that. Um, also, starting next week on Mondays and Fridays, we're going to have shorts uh, that'll be anything from tips and tricks from our editorial staff to deeper dives into our brand partners. So make sure you stay tuned for that bonus content there. And make sure you also like, subscribe, follow along, leave us a comment so you can stay up to date with everything going on. And uh, if you see us out on the road, say hello. After driving through more of West Virginia's beautiful countryside, we made it to the Via Ferrata. Italian for Iron Road, the Via Ferrata in West Virginia is one of only three in the country and just a few in the world. To prepare for the mountains of Italy, World War II troops actually climbed this Via Ferrata in West Virginia. We hiked up to the base of the fens where we clipped in and began our journey. 
Attached to steel cables, we climbed up rocks and steel rungs until we got to climb around the first fin to our first real overlook. Steve and I both have rock climbing experience, but this was unlike anything I have ever done. The feeling of climbing around and sitting on giant rock fins is something I am honestly still trying to find the words to describe. Incredible doesn't seem to do it justice. Our next challenge was the bridge. Hanging at 200 feet in the air, it wobbled as we walked across it and my body moved like I was doing some kind of strange dance. Now don't get me wrong, if you're watching this and thinking, holy cow, I could never do something like that, I am terrified of heights. Let me tell you that I am with you. My ability to walk across wobbly bridges and sit on top of tall rock fins only a few feet wide is not due to my lack of fear. It is because I love to push my comfort zone. There's something about feeling terrified but doing it anyway that is so empowering I learn a lot about myself and what I'm capable of, and that feeling is something that I will always keep chasing to push my comfort zone. I learn a lot about myself and what I'm capable of, and that feeling is something that will always keep me chasing to push my comfort zone. We made it to the very top of one of the fins, and we sat up there for a while with our awesome guide, Jake. He grew up in these mountains and can identify every peak and valley we were looking at, and we talked about life in the outdoors as we took in the incredible views before getting back at it. When we finally finish our trip and unclip for the day, I am buzzing with adrenaline, excitement, and a feeling of pride for what we've just accomplished. Our high from being up high quickly came to an end when we got back to the truck. She's refusing to start, and we end up getting her towed to a local mechanics shop and become stranded at Enrox. Lucky for us, the people here are just as spectacular as the Via Ferrata itself. We had to rearrange our schedule a bit, but the manager, Brian, let us stay in one of their rooms, and all of the other staff took us in as if we were one of their own. We got to check out a local watering hole and hang out with some seriously rad humans and take some much needed relaxation time. It's funny how negative experiences can sometimes turn into positive ones. And sometimes, every now and then, a potentially horrible experience can give you exactly what you didn't know you needed. All right, we are tailgate cooking. It's one of our favorite ways to save money and just you know enjoy a little bit more of the space that we're visiting. So today we're doing a chicken carbonara. Um, we've done that on trail. We'll include the recipe for that as well, but it's also a good one with kind of minimal ingredients to cook by the car and, you know, really feel good out here. Uh, it's a three-part meal. We're doing some pasta in our Genesis over here. We're going to do the chicken in this pan, and then we've got a sauce that we'll throw in when we mix everything together and kind of finish it off. So I got our water started. I'm gonna turn that up a little bit, get it boiling, and I'm gonna add the pasta. And while the pasta's cooking, I'm gonna make the sauce for the meal. Once the spaghetti's about done, I uh, like to throw the chicken on. And once that starts to get brown, then we're going to throw in our garlic and onion. Um, let this sit. Once it's done, we'll strain it. And then we're going to combine them all. And then we're going to throw our sauce in and give it about five minutes to kind of move it in around the pan and finishing it off. All right, pasta's done. We're going to use our conveniently placed holes over here on the lid. Uh, drain that. And we're going to add the, the pasta and the sauce to the mix and finish this off. Recreation.gov is your one-stop shop when it comes to planning your next adventure. With over 4,000 facilities and activities around the country, including camping, rafting, horseback riding, and much, much more, at over 100,000 recreation locations, they've got you covered. Using all of the tools, services, and information on their site, you can dream up your next trip and then go live it. Lakey expands its groundbreaking cross-trail line to include a traditional trekking three-section configuration. Featuring the innovative hybrid cross shark grip, it offers the speed and power transmission of the trigger shark system, combined with the support of an ergonomic hiking grip for additional support and comfort on descents. The breathable strap features a wide support area for effective power transfer and a secure fit. The sweat absorbing grip allows for maximum control, and the length adjustment is made easy and secure with the Speedlock 2 on 100% high modulus carbon shafts for lightweight durability. From the moment you wake, 
to the fuel you need. From ingenious products that empower true adventure, to simple gear that enables fun. Products that perform in any terrain, anywhere, for anyone. A relentless ally for your adventures. The adventures that live inside us all. You can't take full advantage of hiking if you don't take good care of your feet, and that's why we love Darn Tough socks so much. They offer a variety of colors and designs for men and women. They're super comfortable because they're made from merino wool blend that's also antimicrobial so they don't get funky. And best of all, the socks are so durable that Darn Tough offers a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Darn Tough socks, go to darntough.com or click the link in the description below. The last and final part of the trip would be getting to know America's newest national park, the New River Gorge. It's home to 70,000 acres of all sorts of multi-sport fun and awe-inspiring views. We were told Ace Adventure Resort was the place to base camp and they offered to take us out climbing and rafting. Instantly sold, we got a sweet little cabin with a hot tub where I planted my butt right away that night. The next morning we meet our climbing guide, E-Ray, and a new friend, Kamiko, who'd be climbing and hanging out with us as well. Okay, we are starting our morning off at uh, from Ace with our guide, E-Ray, and we just met Kamiko here, and uh, me and him were talking before I even knew he was on our trip, so this just worked out great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're doing some climbing and rappelling today, and it's a short hike to the crag, and we are in New River Gorge. It's the newest national park. Is this national within park? the uh, the boundaries? We are absolutely within the boundaries. Sweet. Awesome. Checking off another park. We hit it off instantly with these two guys, and it seemed like we were in for a good day of climbing. Ebray let me hang out on a static rope and get a few shots of the crew. We'd start on some easier routes and then move our way up to harder and harder until we were all spent after one of their legendary crack climbs. I hadn't climbed that much since an accident a few years ago and it was such a good time. We'd cheer each other on and if any of us got defeated we'd tie right back in and give it another go once we'd get done resting. After a big lunch and some rest, E-Ray would take us on to another crag to show us some of the beautiful rock amphitheaters and epic work that the Axis Fund was doing at the gorge. We top out on a 100 foot cliff overlooking the entire gorge. E-Ray had plans for us taking the quick way home, with a rappel over an overhang all the way back to where we started. It was a rush and we all had a bit of a panic feeling stepping over the edge. <laughs> e rigged a backup line on an ATC to help lower us or be there for a backup just in case. If you've never tried rappelling, that's probably the most safe way and fun way to learn the ropes. We told our new friend some of our backpacking stories and we may have inspired him to grab a pack of his own. Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. This has been cool. So, I sat down with you yesterday at a picnic table not knowing we were on the same climbing trip, right. uh, not knowing we were going to be hanging out, yeah. uh, and it's been real. And I think something I want to showcase in these videos that we're doing is trail community. Mm -hmm. And you, I find this time and time again, wherever we go, we just meet people. And we're out there, we're traveling, we're stoked. And we're so excited for the day that you're just like, you're more open than normal. Yeah, right? yeah. And we hit it off and talk life. And I, I, know, I just wanted to hear a little bit about your story. What brought you Man. there to that day? Well, a number of things brought me out to Ace. Adventure. Once I had to get away, I had to recharge, I had to reboot my, my engine, my mind. You know what I mean? It was going a million other places that I didn't want it to go. So I feel that. the outdoors really brings, uh, it centers me. I see. Uh, 
I mean, so, nothing like jumping off a hundred foot cliff or telling all that. That'll reset right. your brain, right? It, 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 will. it will. It will definitely reset it. And um, so I wanted to get back into like what I love the most, you know, and that's yeah. being outdoors. Yeah. Um, so I, it was great seeing you guys. I felt y'all's energy it was really super high, and I was like, oh man, these cats are. Yeah. That, that's why I had an energy. You're yeah. glowing, you know, yeah. like that bug, the light. <laughs> Your aura was nice, man. It was really, it was bright. So, um, and I'm, I don't know. I just love meeting people, and then along this way, and when you're outdoors and you're meeting people along these trails, uh, they become so friendly and so open. Yeah, you know what I mean. I do a lot of solo travel too when I'm not with Jordan, and I yeah. think that's cool that you're doing that because it just proves that like everybody out, and that's if you're if you're doing things outside, yeah. you're, you're friendly, you're stoked, and like. I don't know, I think more people should try that. A lot of people yeah. don't go because they don't have any deal with that yeah. thing. And you just went, and I think that's cool. Oh like, yeah, I don't mind, I don't mind going alone. Yeah. Going alone for me is, um, it's really, um, um, let's say, it's, it gives me a moment of clarity because I don't have to really worry about too many people. Like, exactly. I just worry about myself. Who I want to do today. What do I want to do yeah. today? Um, and then like I run into people along the way, this journey, and it's like, that's dope for me. And. Yeah. I can't like I can't like duplicate that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like I don't know. It's it's been uh, like I started my outdoor journey almost a decade ago now. I'm like yeah. I can't see myself ever not playing in the woods or ever going out and meeting new folks and trying new things. Dude, I took a six year hiatus from like being outdoors. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying that so I wasn't. Stupid. Yeah, like it's not, I'm not saying that I wasn't traveling, but it was just in a different type of tip and form that I'm not used to. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, and it just wasn't me. Yeah. It wasn't. So, so like, sometimes we get that way in life. Yeah. yeah. Your life Absolutely. can happen quick. And before you know it, you're like, whoa, where am I? Sometimes <laughs> you compromise a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when you compromise too much, um, you forget who you are. Yeah. Sometimes you really need to tap back in. I feel that. You know? And so that's what I had to do. Yeah. Well, the woods is, I think, one of the better places to, to find yourself and to, yeah. to, you know, just have it all figured out. It's just, I don't know. You, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, because you know, along this, we're not going to figure it all out, and that's the thing. I, I know that it's it's cool for me. Yeah. yeah. Understanding that I'm never going to get the pure and clearest understanding of everything. Yeah, but maybe but like if you, I could get a little bit here, there, and yeah, there, exactly. Then when you go back to like, yesterday, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you go back to that normal life, then it's just like a little bit easier. To, it is. It's way easier to handle the mundane yeah. and all that the silly stuff that comes your way. You Amen. know, it does. Um, it lets you recalibrate your brain yeah you know what I mean because yeah. we need that like the city life and just things that are moving at a fast pace and uh if you're working in the corporate world you know what I mean it's, it's hard out there oh yeah you know? yeah the, the world's a weird place and I think that's the coolest thing about the world you just get back to like kind of like where our roots are and what we all came from right right, right? and maybe that's, why right. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it feels right yeah you know that's why it feels right who's this guy so yeah, we're all staying at Ace. Uh, we came in here to have this conversation uh, in the cabin. Pretty yeah. epic. Got the hot tub. You got the hot tub up. going. I mean, you all have the sweet picnic table. Yep. And after after being stranded for a couple days, and uh, you know, just you know, we, we, we've been on the move and yeah, yeah, in yeah. the woods, yeah. and uh, just to come here to like a, a hot shower, a hot tub, and all these oh, things. Man. It's like luxury. Yeah, it is. This is five star. And there's you know what I mean. Seriously. You did the mountain biking trails, yeah? Yeah, I did the mountain. So at the top of the mountain, so you now there was trails in the back, like they don't say my tent was here, and then there's trails in the back, and it goes all the way down the mountain to the main. Nice. Did you get on the, the water park too? No, I didn't. That's just supposed nice. to nice sneak back. You should. Really you should. Sure. That looks like being a kid again, right? <laughs> no, right? And I did not do it because I just wanted to hit the trails up. I wanted to hit mountain bike trails up. I wanted to hit the. I wanted to climb. So yesterday, and this is kind of the start of everything, we all got to climb yesterday. Yes, we did, man. Uh, the New River Gorge. The New uh, River Gorge. Ace's guy, E-Ray, took us out. He was a dude. I like that. Oh, man, I liked E-Ray. E-Ray was a cool cat, man. His energy was too, like, real smooth. It was, like, it was up there, but it's smooth. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I love it. He's a solid guy. And he really is. Guy. He is. And he's very knowledgeable about his, his craft. You know what I'm saying? He knows. He knows what he's talking about, yeah, and yeah. I can dig that. And we, we started small, we all got warmed up, and then we, we got a little aggressive. None of us had climbed in a while, but no. we, all, we all checked some boxes. And we didn't, I didn't think I was gonna be uh, 
doing five nine crack climbs after I mean, you were doing you're doing this. No, yeah, years you were ago. you were you were busting. You were you were doing a great job. Me too. It was cool building each other up. You know, like yeah, because that's what you need. We all had a slip or a fall, and then you know we get down and kind of like rest a little bit. And yeah. I remember you were packing up your tripod, and I was like, hey man, you want one more on this? And you didn't even say anything. Yeah. You just packed up your stuff and set it down and head right back to the wall. I wanted it so bad. You got it. I did, man. I just wanted to make it look clean. Yeah. And then, I, you know, you struggle, and then I struggled in. But it, that's the thing. Adversity is what makes a man. Amen. So, Amen. and in, the, in that process, man, it's just, you got to look at, like, the real big picture, you know? If I just keep getting back up and I try again and I try again, eventually, you know, I'm going to succeed. You're that much stronger. And you're that much stronger. We talked about this a little bit yesterday. I think the coolest thing about backpacking is all the life lessons you learn out in the woods, or, or, or not just backpacking, but at any outdoor endeavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, but backpacking, like, you know, something bad happens, you have to keep going. You ain't got no choice. And that's the same like, thing with life, you know. Yeah. So if you can, if you can smile at the the bruises or uh, yeah. the, the rain, and yeah. you're that much stronger. And I think those lessons are cool to learn. Yeah. And. Uh, it's going to teach you either way. Also. It's going to teach you, you know? either way. I was inspired by his spirit and dove right into our giveaway bin to give him a pair of new darn tufts to try out the trails. By the end of the weekend, we all agreed that we'd have to get on the trail sometime for your reunion. Stay well, Kamiko. Yellowstone bourbon is handcrafted in the state of Kentucky. These small batch whiskeys are the work of seventh generation craftsmen, resulting in a unique taste perfect for the trail. Plus, a portion of every bottle sold goes to helping preserve our national parks. Cheers to that. To learn more about the products from Yellowstone bourbon, head on over to limestonebranch.com or click the link in the description below. Since 1984, Sawyer has manufactured gear for outdoor enthusiasts that expect the best. We are an independent brand dedicated to developing and creating technically better protection for everyone. So when you buy Sawyer products, you're not only protecting the ones you love, you're helping protect millions of people lacking access to clean water. And you're helping us to do more. Protect more, give more, and innovate more, which helps us be more than an outdoor company. What tools do we use to mark the way? We mark time by days, weeks, and years. But the stuff we remember, the good stuff, we mark by moments. Moments where we're challenged and overcome. The kind that get dirt under our nails and fire in our hearts. We believe that every problem has a solution and that every solution is a moment where we prove who we are. These are moments made. Today we get to raft the New River, which is something I'm incredibly stoked about. My dad was a squirt boater in the southeast in the 70s, and a love of whitewater is in my blood. We get geared up and all pile into the bus to be shuttled to our put-in. When we get there, it begins to rain a little bit, but I welcome it since we are about to be covered in water anyways from splashing through giant rapids on the river. We carry our boat down to the river and all pile into the raft. At the start of the day, the people on this raft were strangers to us and now we all sit side by side while our guide Jason tells us when and how hard to paddle and we charge through the billowing whitewater together as a team. At this water level, this section of the New River is classified a four plus and Jason gives us a rundown of each upcoming rapid in a very calm and concise manner, telling us where we want to take the boat and what to do if we fall out of the water. I paddle in unison with my team and I grin from ear to ear even as I'm getting pounded in the face by the mighty river. After quite a few rapids, we got to a stretch of calm water where we were allowed to jump in if we wanted to.
After some swimming, we climbed back into the boat and danced through a few more rapids until we floated under the infamous New River Gorge Bridge and arrived at our takeout point. We all piled back into the bus, soaking wet and full of adrenaline. Once we got back to our cabin and changed out of our cold, wet clothes, we decided to cap off the day and celebrate our last night here with a delicious Kentucky mule. All right, it's our last night in West Virginia. Uh, we've had a really big week. It's been a wonderful week, so we are celebrating it with a big drink. I uh, learned this one from Derek over at Yellowstone. Thanks, Derek. And because there's so little ingredients to this one, it's kind of an instant car camping classic for me. Uh, if you wanna make it by your fire, get yourself two ounces of Yellowstone bourbon, half ounce of lime, you're gonna add some ice, you're gonna mix that all around, top it off with some ginger beer, and then add some fresh mint to tie it all together. Today is our last day in the gorge. We load up our belongings into the truck and decide that it's the perfect weather to go check out a few more waterfalls on our way out of town. All right, we just checked out, sadly, uh, from our little cabin at Ace. And uh, before we leave the New River Gorge, I think we're gonna try and check off a few more West Virginia's waterfalls. Yes. So it's, it's part two today. And the first one you have planned for us is... Cathedral Falls. Literally, uh, I can see it from yeah, the car, so... It's beautiful, it's a huge waterfall. So let's this, go check it out. This is gonna be our warm up, and then what's next? Kanawha Falls, and then we got one more after that. Oh yeah, let's give it. First stop is Cathedral Falls. Located in a hollowed out gorge, she plunges over 60 feet and is located right off the road. After that, we drove to Kanawha Falls, where Cathedral Falls is tall and lean, Kanawha is almost its opposite, short and wide. These falls stretch nearly the entire length of the Kanawha River and are located just up the road from Cathedral Falls. Lastly, we make the beautiful drive out to Sandstone Falls. This waterfall is the largest on the New River and spans 1,500 feet wide. The falls form a dramatic starting line for the New River's final rush through the gorge to its joining with the Gauley River to form the Kanawha River. We just got done exploring some waterfalls all morning. It's been beautiful. It's been the perfect weather for waterfalls. Um, I have been hiking around in wet oboes because we went whitewater rafting yesterday and these are the only shoes that I had. Um, but with that, I kind of wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about that and how explain how my feet have felt awesome today because basically one thing that's really important about wool and why it's so great for hiking is that wool is thermoregulating, which means not only does it keep your feet warm, but if you're in a warm area, it can help keep your feet cool. So it's been colder here than I expected. And like I said, my shoes were wet all day, wet and cold, and my feet have felt great. I don't have any blisters or any hot spots or anything. Um, and that's a combination really of the two things. So the wool socks with that, but then also with the oboes, the way that these shoes are fitted, um, they're a little bit wider in the toe box and then they get narrower at the heel because Obos has done a ton of research. Their founder actually sat in an airport and measured like thousands and thousands of people's feet and figured out that that's how most Americans' feet are shaped. They're wide and then they get smaller in the heel. So that's kind of how these shoes are shaped and that helps your heel from slipping. And it really makes a huge difference. Uh, another big thing too is the arch support on the side. Um, it feels a little bit farther back than a lot of the other shoes I have, but that's actually the correct way that you want your arch support to be. You don't want your entire arch to be supported. You want your foot to be able to move and kind of pronate a little bit. The fit of your shoes is really an important factor when not getting blisters and Obos fits the majority of the American foot. And if you want to test that out, go to your local retail store and have them fit you yourself. Just got back from the hike. The trail was super muddy. I'm really glad we had our poles. Um, with my legs still being kind of injured, it was really nice when I skid to have some extra points of contact there. Uh, the, it was a little wet, we got rained on, so what I'm gonna do to make sure I really prolong the last or the life of my poles is to go ahead and open them all the way up. You can see that there's some grit, sand, and moisture in there, and I don't want that sitting for a long time, so I'm gonna take them all the way apart and store them like that so that they air out. Um, and then you can just wipe them down with a cloth and they'll, they'll uh, extend the life of your poles. 
As we pile into the truck to head to our next adventure, I realize how much I'm going to miss it here. They say that West Virginia is almost heaven, and based on what we've seen, the pristine National Forest campsites, world-class climbing, breathtaking waterfalls, and countless adrenaline-pumping adventures in our nation's newest national park, I'd say it's pretty darn close. And I make a promise to myself that we'll come back here to explore even further. Now we're off to see what kind of fun we can get into in Utah. Based on the temperatures there, I think we're going to have to find ourselves some water to play in.